join us for a visit to one of many commuter rail systems in the United States that features the quintessential modern North American bi-level car originally designed by Hawker Sidley in Ontario, Canada in the mid-1970s. Let's take a look at how this design has withstood the test of time. The journey begins at the transit center in Ogden, Utah. Several local bus routes intersect here, and it is the northern terminus of the Front Runner, the heavy rail commuter service that runs from here through Salt Lake City to Provo in the south. We'll be taking the 12.07 p.m. train, which is an all-station service. But before, let's take a look at the facilities provided by the transit center. The modern building is pretty spartan, featuring restrooms and a staff ticket office, but no stores of any kind and a few benches pretending to be a waiting room. We purchased our ticket here and were kindly advised to get a group day pass for $15, which covered us for the trip to Salt Lake City and back, as well as full use of the transit system in Salt Lake for the day. For the four of us, that works out to be $3.75 each, an incredible deal. Okay, let's make our way to the front runner platform. To get to the trains, we pass by rental scooter and bike staging areas and two ticket vending machines. These are easy to use and a good alternative to the ticket office inside the transit center. And here's our ride, a three-car front-runner train that has already arrived from the south, ready to reverse direction and head back. The front-runner trains feature three Bombardier bi-level cars with an MP36 locomotive on the north end operating in a push-pull configuration. The Bombardier bi-levels are the reason we're here for this trip. I've been yearning to ride and review this excellent commuter car for years. We have a family connection to the history of the original design of this car for Go Transit in Toronto, in Ontario, Canada, and it's been a very long time since I rode in one of these. Powering our train is one of the front-runner MP36PH-3C locomotives dating back to 2007, about the same age as the bi-levels. Now let's go ahead and board our train and explore the interior. The immediate feel is how spacious this car is inside, especially when you consider that it's a bi-level. The bottom floor tends to differ somewhat between the different cars. This one has a bike and large luggage area along one side, plus typical face-to-face -face seats along the other. This is actually a tri-level car with this small intermediate level above the bogies. You pass by through here on the way upstairs. Let's walk over to the last car for a closer look at the top level. And here's the main passenger level. Most seats are arranged in bays of four, with some around a table. 
This presents plenty of seat choices if you want to work or are traveling in a group. Interestingly, the seats without a table have in-between armrests and those with the table don't. I guess that's to make access to the window seat easier. The tables are nice sized and the seats themselves are padded enough and comfortable for the one hour or less that most of the journeys take on the front runner. The leg space is reasonable, especially when there's no one sitting in front of you, and the double power socket is conveniently located just below the table. As is the norm on modern trains, select windows provide emergency exits in case of a catastrophic event. And strangely enough, some seat pairs without a table also do not have in-between armrests. Here's the downstairs layout that I found in the middle car. Bench seats with a huge amount of leg space. We depart Ogden right on time and soon pass by some old railway facilities where vintage rolling stock is stabled. It looks like this is the old Ogden railway station. Now let's take a look at the restroom, which in this car is huge. Everything was kind of old-fashioned, but working well and clean. Wi-Fi is available throughout the train, easy to connect and achieve some very high download and upload speeds. Well done! Overall, these bi-level commuter cars are excellent, with plenty of space, a bright interior and a comfortable ride. The front runner cars were built in the early 2000s, but based on what I remember about the original design from the 70s, they haven't changed much in those 30 years. I don't know if Alstom still offers the bi-level design to commuter railroads, and if so, it would be interesting to compare the current product to the front runner or earlier vintage. We pulled into Layton, a station at about the midpoint of the trip to Salt Lake City. At the opposite platform is a northbound train heading back to Ogden. Here, as at the other intermediate stops, there was a good exchange of passengers indicating that the service is well patronized not just for end-to-end -end journeys.
driving cab is located on the right side of the car, leaving the left side available for watching the track ahead, a perfect spot for rail fans. The area through which our train passes is a mixture of industrial and residential development. The Wasatch Mountains to the east form a beautiful backdrop for the scenery, but on the west side there isn't much to see except for the occasional glimpse of Salt Lake and the more frequent stores and warehouses. Just north of Salt Lake City, we pass by a large Union Pacific freight yard, as well as tracks where the single-level front-runner cars are stored. These appear to be the Comet-type cars, which I don't think are used in daily operation. If anyone knows what UTA is planning to do with these, please comment below. Right on time at 1.03 in the afternoon, we arrive at the North Temple Station in Salt Lake City. A lot of passengers alight and board here. There is a bridge across the tracks carrying a road and light rail tracks for the line to the Salt Lake City Airport. Most of the front runner passengers head up to the overpass to board the light rail trains, including us for our short trip to downtown. So how well did this bi-level design dating back to 1975 do almost 50 years later? I think very well. Some of the features certainly show their age, but the cars feel modern, are very spacious and provide a very good commute experience. They've also been well maintained, a testament to the Utah Transit Authority with many years if not decades of useful life left in them. Let me know what you think of this design in the comments below. The train features the newer Siemens S70 US cars operating since 2011 in Salt Lake City. US in the name stands for Ultra Short, corresponding to the three section vehicle design rather than the more typical five section. As we get off by the convention center for a bit of a walk, one of the earlier design Salt Lake City LRVs comes in the opposite direction. These are the SD160 cars, also built by Siemens, but originally designed by Duvag in Dusseldorf, Germany. The SD160s date back to the very early 2000s. We leave you with a few parting shots of downtown Salt Lake City architecture. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.